Hi, my name's Daisy and today I'm talking about all things movie companion guides. If you're not sure what a movie companion guide is, it's generally based around book to movie adaptations. I rarely see one that is centered around something that wasn't originally a book. Come looking like this and they're really big and they have lots and lots of stuff. Let's use the Hunger Games one because oh, everyone loves the Hunger Games. If you don't, I have questionable whether, yeah. Oh, let's, it's very hard to do this because it's not very easy. Okay, let's just flip. Okay, all right, they, that wasn't a very good detailed flip, was it? I think you vaguely got an idea of what they have inside them. However, today I'm actually going to be discussing what they have inside them and the pros and the cons that go along with them. I have five of each and I'm going to just say my thoughts on these books because they are really great, but they also have some really bad downsides that I personally feel. And I just want to talk about them, especially because my recent edition was the Vampire Academy one, which came out on the 30th of December and I have been reading through this and the other three that I have, you've seen the Hunger Games one, I also have the Beautiful Creatures one, and finally I have, oh god, I sorry, I hit the tripod, sorry, I hit you right in like your shoulder or your boob, depending on how high you are. <laughs> anyway, then I have my last one, which is The City of Bones. Let's start off with the negatives first, because I always think bad news should come first, and then at the end, when you have positive news, you're left on a lighter note and a better note, and then that's just generally better. Number one, sometimes you get too much detail. These are often released about a month to two months ahead before the movie comes out into cinemas, and sometimes that can be so pivotal. And what I mean by this is that you could find out information that are listed in these books that have things like changes. Now, everyone knows with movie adaptations, there's gonna be changes, but sometimes there are things that as a fan, you are going to just flip out on because you've read them beforehand and you haven't been able to see the actual movie and you're just thinking, oh my God, how could you change that? Why would you change that? Why would you tell me that you changed that? I feel so betrayed right now. So sometimes having a wide expanse of information isn't always good. Number two goes hand in hand with the first one, but it can prepare you for the movie in all the wrong ways. Sometimes it is very true that curiosity kills the cat. Number three, some won't actually provide you with the information as a fan or a fangirl that you want to know. For instance, some people might have wanted to know topless routines for training. Who knows? But things that you feel like as a fan you want to know from behind the scenes, sometimes these things aren't included because they just for some reason miss it out. Why would you miss out certain things that are just so obvious that you want to know? Because just... <clears throat> Number four, they can be expensive. And by expensive, I mean, I think for one of these, I paid 14 pounds for, which I'm not sure what that turns into dollars, but I'd say probably like, I don't know, between 17 to $20. Who knows, I'm not very good at conversion rates. However, that is quite expensive for a book. That I could buy two books with in at full price. I could buy two books at full price for one book. And now bearing in mind, yes, they are larger, but they are quite small. They have a lot of information contained in them. However, a lot of the time they have big photos that take up the whole page. So why am I paying £14 for it? Number five, they aren't always good at drawing in new fans. Now that seems like a very obvious thing because if it's a book and it's being changed into a movie you'd expect that people who read the book generally are going to want to read these books but however if you were for instance you heard about the Hunger Games you maybe seen a trailer but you hadn't read the books and then you read that I think it'd be really quite confusing because there's some details in there that I think they're not presented very well to people who are new audience. And that sometimes can happen with the movie adaptation itself. It's too centered around the fans, which is great if you're a fan, but if you're not, it doesn't bring in new people. Now let's talk about the positives. Number one, stills. Equally, if you're a person that doesn't like to see stills or photos from the movie adaptations, this could work into the negatives for you. There's a very fine line when there is marketing between too many stills, too little stills, and then you have the perfect line in between them. Now everyone wants to see their characters being portrayed and you want to see them in certain scenes. However, it's when there are so many stills, <coughs> Twilight, <coughs> yes, and videos possibly, but obviously we're not talking about videos necessarily in this because we're talking about the books, but it does happen. 
if you release too much information, the fan feels like they've already seen the movie. If you don't release enough, the fans are angry because they haven't seen anything from the movie and they're just left guessing. If you get it right, and most movie adaptations do get it right, and they give you enough from behind the scenes and from the movie, then it's all happy and content. Number two, most movie adaptations will have interviews with the author or the director or the screenwriter or the actors, which is amazing and delicious because, delicious, why would I say delicious? That was completely the wrong word. I don't know what word I was looking for then, but it certainly wasn't delicious. I think it's because I was thinking about cupcakes a minute ago. Oh my God. <laughs> Anyway, I was about to say there is nothing better than getting information about the movie adaptation from the sources. Number three, behind the scene features. Now this seems pretty obvious as movie companions are pretty much behind the scenes. Books. It's really nice to see the book being changed into a script and then being acted out by actors who are originally themselves and then turn into our beloved characters on the screen. I don't think it makes it less special knowing things from behind the scenes because I think it's important to know that it's all about behind the sets and things like this because you could have actors that make the most brilliant characters however if they are standing in a toilet and instead of being in a Shadowhunter Institute it's not gonna work. Number four they make all us fangirls have even more hype before the movie is released. I like having little things released just before the movie so you get oh my god it's coming soon feels. Number five they make you have faith. People handling movie adaptations often know how much stress is involved because of us fans. Having something translated from your imagination onto the big screen can make you worry quite a bit. Is my favourite scene going to be in there? Is the actors going to portray the character in the right way, with the right emotion, with the sarcasm? You don't know. And to be able to have all this information from behind the scenes often makes me feel like I have more faith in the movie because I feel like they're actually taking to credit credit everything that we feel as a fan we would want to see and they always do talk about the fans and that they're important and I just think that these sort of things are very particular to us people and we need to know. They help restore those feelings of oh my god are they going to screw it up because often if you do think they are going to screw it up you can generally notice from the movie companion. So those are my pros and cons for movie companion guides. I want to know though, do you guys collect movie companion guides for the movies that you are excited to see? And what are your thoughts on them? Do you agree with some of the things I said or would you have added in another opinion that maybe I haven't thought of? Let me know in the comments and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing and happy reading. Bye bye!